Here's part two of season one of Mashal. I still don't know how to do intros. I hope this is okay for now. All right, into episode seven. Ah! Mash introduces himself to this creepy wizard and is immediately assailed by a lengthy soliloquy. The Minister of Mink Coat's ideologies are pretty much the opposite of Mash's. Mash doesn't understand Scary Man's big words and deflects with his weaponized autism. His opponent senses potential hostility. Mash has no such intentions, however. The Blood Purist makes an attempt at seizing Mash's cash is denied, then attacks. Mash does gymnastics, which frees Silva from his arboreal servitude. Puppet Guy makes a weird spider that swipes the coin and pitches Mash into a column. Mash accidentally curb stomps Silva. He panics. He puts token retrieval on hold to take the gravely wounded Silva for treatment. Mash promises to return and defeat the purple-tinted deviant, then leaves. The spectators are amused. This guy is perplexed. So is this freaky Muppet. Mash pulled a sneaky and swiped Swapped the coin with a button with the power of duck. Silva awakens to Mash's violent thrashing. He is confused. Mash attempts to explain, but bites his tongue. Silva inserts his own explanation, which is more sophisticated than the truth. The fire and ice tropes argue. They nearly break into a fight, but are scolded by Mash, despite his pantomimed irony. Dot respects noble etiquette and reveals his arrival bore a gift. Bougie tea. Mash is content. The lemon emerges with urgent news. Dog Dormitory is winning the Divine Vision race by a landslide. The flock of birds steal themselves for battle. Mash carries out his punishment for obliterating a government official by cleaning this room full of round chickens. Lance shows up to help. Quasimodo and his little cousin surface from whatever wretched hive spawned them. Mash is sucked into the floor, and the bizarre dog people introduce themselves. Olor and answer. Olor turns into a freaking shark and goes to eat Mash. Ulcer can only state the obvious and throw a chakram around. Lance is unthreatened, but stumped by the proximity of the small creatures. He cannot retaliate by his sister's telepathic commands, and protects whatever animals he can, taking heavy damage in the process. Answer feels he has the upper hand and taunts. Lamp strategically lures the chickens away during his opponents to raid, and goes for the finishing move. Lance monologues briefly over the mangled remains of Answer. Meanwhile, in it Atlantis, the predator becomes the prey. Shark magic happens, but it doesn't matter. Coin obtained. Mash is disappointed in the Magia Lupus's lack of firepower. A third mystery teleports behind them. Lance's magic is nullified, and Mash is evaded. This masked menace is only after his allies and sucks them into a bong. Mash and Lance become eager for battle. The powerful dog mage's mask was significantly damaged from Mash's strike, and they reveal that they're a physical type, like Mash. This fish dorm chad is messed up by the speedy stranger from the previous episode. The good guy gang discuss strategy for their upcoming siege on the dog people. Mash fails to equip his bird branded robe, but eventually readies himself. The lemon emerges with urgent news. Tom has withered. His bamboo related metaphors lack their usual enthusiasm. Tom reveals that he was attacked by some kind of mime lord in a dream. When Tom awoke, he was sucked dry of his magical energy. Mash eats a cream puff in distress. Many others suffered the same fate. Lemming goes for the ultimate seduction technique of gift, assault, seduce. She fails. Later that night, the Bird Brigade wanders the hallways in search of the pantomimist perpetrator. Lemon is under a nefarious bewitchment. She twitches violently and metamorphoses into a puppet. They give chase, which leads to an illusory floor. Lance dispels the magical door, but it requires a password. Dob tries to explode. It is ineffective. Mash has his own superior techniques for breaking and entering. The lair of the Magia Lupus lies ahead. Mash recalls Lemon's words of warning and the quartet of conjurers get going. They stroll into a vast arena and are ambushed by a Magia Lugi. Dot becomes enraged by the opposition's resplendence and begins his duel with words of aggression. Meanwhile, at the Bureau of Magic's headquarters, Gandalf is informed of a troublesome prison break accomplished by someone called Innocent Zero. Dot's booms are dispersed by some leaves. He remains confident and places mines. His opponent is confused. The villain ensnares Dot with his spaghetti appendages and becomes spiky. He goes for the kill move, but is exploded by Dom's time mines. Plant Guy's pampered hubris is incinerated by an impassioned follow-up. Even in defeat, he remains elegant. Our heroes are devoured by the earth beneath their toes and are dispersed. 
Lance encounters another psychotic wizard, Worth Maddle. Finn and Dom meet their match as well, an e-girl named Love Cute, and her vegetable-flavored companion, Milo Genius. Finn is in distress, but encouraged by Dom. Mash spurts forth from the earthen womb and finds a familiar face. Or mask, I guess. Abyss Razor. Abyss politely questions Mash's ability to use magic. Mash nervously deflects. They discuss their similarities and ready their armaments. Lance immediately goes for the kill. Emo John Lennon turns into poop and becomes several homunculi. He ensnares Lent with his dastardly feces and throws some orbs. Worth attempts to religiously convert Lance, but fails miserably due to their conflicting philosophies. Lance throws some rocks to flush Wart out of his filthy crevasse. Scatman has an emotional crisis and slurps an illicit substance, which allows him to achieve magical enlightenment and summon a jacked goat. He briefly recalls his childhood traumas for inspiration. Lance counters by unleashing his Benkai torture Disintegrating Writhe's pathetic conjuration, Worth is shook. Lance has a heart-to-heart -heart with his defeated opponent, encouraging him with mutual respect. Mash and Abyss exchange blows. Razor's magic allows him to accelerate his movements in a direction of his choosing. He reveals the Magia Lupus's vile bone contraption, which absorbs magic from incapacitated wizards. Mash is enraged but remains inert in the face of Abyss's rapid strikes. He catches his adversary's sword by the hardened Aegis of his chiseled abs. Abby has pink eye. Mash is confused. It is called the Evil Eye, the Eye of the Devil, which temporarily disables the magic of any who are observed by its host. Mash feels bad for not being able to experience Abyss's full capacity as a being. Abby explains how his curse has only incited revulsion and hostility. He erects a hemisphere and goes extra fast. Mash's speed, in contrast, is reduced drastically. He punches the ground in response, which allows him to narrow Abyss's range of motion. Mash discharges his muscle magic, Hurricane Rush, ultimately leading to Abyss Razor morphing into Shallow Spoon by Mash's barrage of WWE moves. Abyss monologues about being abused as a child and having lasting psychological damage as a result. Mash reaches out the hand of Fellowship, is kindly rejected, then warned of Abel, the puppet guy. Mash doesn't care about Abyss's pink eye or Abel's hazardous psychosis and makes a friend through kindness anyway. Gandalf has told Finn's big brother to go help. Love makes the lads nervous with her kawaii seduction techniques. She is rejected and engages in violence as an emotional defense mechanism. Love remains persistent, tempting Dot once more. He declines her advances in his slapped silly style. Dor tries stealth but fails. Love reveals all of Mosshead's personal credit card information as a victory address. Milo is pretty much a mammalian Medusa and he is on his way to get Mash hard. Love goes for the kill as Finn stands idly by. She derives pleasure from the suffering of those who rejected her. Dot hallucinates phantasms of his childhood dramas. His sister scolds him for not being more self-assertive. She declares that one day he will find someone he needs to protect, a real friend who will share his battles. After breaking his psychosis, Dom invokes the power of fellowship and dispels love's pathetic wind. He bears the mark of God carved into his melon. His bombs got that extra juice now. Love's amygdala reveals that Doth's forehead tattoo is called the Warding Cross, which imbues the holder with immense magical power if they get too emotional. Dom has become emotional at this point and displays a show of force. Love concedes defeat and is grateful for Dot's mercy. A bust of Feral Vin Diesel breaches the floor like a great stone whale, catching everyone off guard. Dot is bitten, and Collard Greens is furious. He earthbends some rock hands into existence. Love is smug. Milo Genius okay. becomes mild dough and joyless from a sword. It's Finn's sophisticated elder brother, the divine visionary, Rain Ames. Milo goes for a sneaky, fails, then is brutally impaled by a barrage of what has to be at least four or five knives. Rayman has the eyes of a killer and the foot of one too. His lecture is brief but effective. The younglings flee from Rain's ferocity. Later, Rain encounters Mash, who is bumbling around the hallways. He senses a funky, translucent aura enveloping Mash. The immense pressure of Mash's radiant energy causes Rain to whip his spider out to investigate. The arachnid spins its eyeballs as Rain prods Mash's defense. Mash is outed as having zero magical power and is set upon by a flock of weaponry. Chair.
There shook. Rain tries again. Mash's bunting stance deflects Rain's extensive katana collection. Rain is impressed and extracts Mash's name. Dumbledore astrally projects himself into Ron's consciousness, informing him of a pure-hearted young boy who goes by that very name. He apologizes and bestows a handkerchief of restoration upon Mush. Mash is disheartened by its jubilant adornment but accepts. They converse about the challenge which lies ahead. Abel. Mash is advised to continue his dauntless warpath in pursuit of what noble ideals he holds. Rain leaves as gallantly as he arrived, reflecting on Gandalf's cerebral musings. Mash struggles with the mechanics of a foreboding door, but after consulting Lemon's gift, he decides that politeness would be inappropriate. Abel's reckoning has just demolished another entryway. Abel comments on Mash's strength and delivers a supremacist sermon. He believes that those who have no magical ability and their caregivers should be purged from society. Mash recalls doing acrobatics and devouring cream puffs from his childhood and decides that Abel must be stopped to achieve world peace. Mash is assailed by puppets and bowls a perfect game in response. Their spectator, Love, is shook. Abro's army of dolls is reduced to splinters. He bloodbends Mash to assert dominance, but chooses to have have him oppose Finn's disembodied exoskeleton. Mash is not permitted to defend himself under the threat of Finn becoming a pile of Legos. Unfortunately for Abel, Mash's Herculean bod is harder than Finn's delicate weaponry. Mash launches the gold coin, maintaining supremacy and freeing the arboreal captive. Abel attempts puppet magic again, but is overpowered by Mash's raw strength. After being solidly clapped in the face, Albert awakens his marionette sorcery. Mash is instantly mannequinized and called a rabbit. Abel molests Mash's pockets for gold pieces, but finds a cream puff instead. Mash dispels Abel's voodoo, which is supposed to prevent brain activity. God explains that Mash is built differently and doesn't need to remain fully conscious to fight back. The psychological allure of cream puffs activated Mash's central nervous system, leading to a polysynaptic reflex in response. Abel turns his collected wizard juice into a gross three-headed fetus, then monologues. His attacks don't work because Mash is agile. Ball is shook and goes all out. Mash eliminates Abel's disfigured summon and suplexes that into 12th century Europe where he reflects on his childhood traumas. Abel's mother was a virtuous woman with upstanding morals. She was murdered in cold blood by a cracked out plebeian one day while hustling at the soup kitchen. She believed in the goodness of humanity and was slain for her naivety. Abel was misled by his lust for revenge and dedication to his saintly mother. Mash calls Abel out on his deluded ideologies and requests that the captured students be released. There is much rejoicing. Dot emerges from the floorboards to join in the celebration. Meanwhile, someone disguised as Lance is accosted by Rain. It's the bellatristic aristocrat in drag named Innocent Zero. Rain inquires on Zero's objective, who reveals that he and the Magia Lupus are searching for something nondescript within the school. Zero comments on Abel's failure and goes to kill him. Rain is attacked by Jean-Pierre, a French knife-wielding cannibal. The celebrations continue. The victors discuss further proceedings while Mash attends the restroom. Zero floats menacingly into the room, casts the festivities aside, questions Apple, then makes him choke himself out. Mash brought cream puffs for the party, but failed to read the room. He accidentally turns Zero into a pastry kebab. After a particularly aggressive sneeze, Zoro desecrates the cream puffs and has a migraine from Mash's stoic radiance. He reveals Mash to be the nondescript something that he was searching for. Zero returns to finish Abel off, but is interrupted by Abyss's flesh magic. Mash offers up his restorative handkerchief while Zero's suspicions are confirmed. He insults the disabled Abyss, which sends Mash into a protective frenzy. Zebra licks a rock nice. out of joy. He gives Mash a challenge, last 30 minutes against his noodle sorcery, and he will spare the existent life forms in the room. Mash accepts, but doesn't begin their battle favorably. Abel reconsiders Mash's strength, daydreams about his 
his mother and comments on his companion's moral folly. Mash interrupts Abel's monologue by interpreting Abyss's feelings. In his heart of hearts, Abyss had to save Abel, and because of his ardent resolve, Mash in turn must save Abyss. The figment of Abel's imagination interprets Mash's words to educate him on how to be kinder to others. Abel has an identity crisis while watching Mash. Abyss visualizes his own demons and recalls the day he was accepted by Abel. Mash is assailed for about 10 minutes by thousands of rigid carbon nuggets. Zero increases his power level slightly, and Mash begins to falter. Abro experienced philosophical enlightenment, stating that the strong have a right to take from the weak, but the weak also have the right to oppose the strong. And now, reformed as a smelly little pleb, he validates his need to assist Mash. Zebo is unenthused and destroys Abel's spindly spider fetus. It was only a ruse to close the gap between Mash's fists and Zero's barbed dome, however. Zero's tempered carapace was partly shattered by Mush's attack, and he pauses their duel to inquire about Mash's magic. Zonglo retrieves an entire mirror from his prison pocket. Impressive. Dot explains that the legendary item has the ability to reflect any spell. Zero is smug. Mash uses his magic. It was super effective. Everyone finally understands that Mash is wizardly deficient. Zero's skin watch makes him afraid and then aroused. He summons a few fingerfuls of spaghetti, says his goodbyes, introduces himself as Cell War, and pieces out into space. Abyss and Abel are thankful. Mash is ruthlessly questioned about possessing no magical ability. They decide to keep his secret safe and receive his gratitude. Attitude. Some guy who recently regained consciousness dribbles out of a crack in the wall and begins to persecute the band of heroes for harboring the magic list. Mash accepts his inevitable reckoning and merrily nibbles on a cream puff. In the after credits, Cell War reports Mash's existence to a psychopathic, glowing dad. And that's the end of season one of Mashal Magic and Muscles. Hello? Like and subscribe for more videos. I have a Patreon too if you're interested. Uh, links for all that is in the description. Thanks for watching. Um, bye.